We work so you can play. Matthew here from miniwargaming.com. This is a continuation of our series on an introduction to War Machine. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic turns that happen in a game of War Machine. Now, I'm not going to go through all the special rules, all the special spells, all the special power attacks that Warjacks can do. We're going to cover a lot of that stuff in other videos. Instead, I want to show you just how the turns feel and how they work. Once again, I remind you this does not replace the rule book. You do need to get the rule book so you can get all of the rules and be able to learn everything about the game. So let's jump right into it. We have two armies set up. Let's take a look at what they are. These armies are pretty close in number of points, but they're this is really a small game, not one that you would normally play. This is smaller than your typical size. The smallest game that you normally play will be 15 points. And this right here is a total of about nine points, or eight or nine points per side. On the Cador side, we have Karchev the Terrible, the man in the machine himself. So he is the war caster, but he is also, he works like a war jack. And in his battle group is one war jack, and the war jack has to be assigned to whoever's controlling it. It can't just be an independent model. And a warcaster has a battle group, and any jack marshals, like I talked about before, they have their own battle groups as well. And right here we have a destroyer. He has both a, a cannon and a close combat attack. We also have a unit of Man of War Demolition Corps. These guys are only close combat, but they uh, are very powerful with their big hammers. On the opposite side, we have probably one of the most powerful warcasters on the Menoth side, which is the Harbringer of Menoth. And in her battle group, she has two war jacks. She has a heavy war jack, the Crusader. And she has a light war jack, the Repenter. So we're going to go through the basic rules of how to play this game. First off, before the, anybody had deployed, we would have rolled to see who would get first turn. And whoever gets first turn deploys first, and obviously they get to go first as well. The next thing that you have to do is you need to, before the game starts, your warcasters have a certain amount of focus. Focus is what they use to cast spells and control their warjacks. Karchev has five focus. So I'm going to use these colored pieces to represent his focus. So he has these five focus on him. The Harbinger, on the other hand, has 10 focus, which is an incredibly large amount of focus. Most of your warcasters will have five, six, or seven focus, but obviously this one is special. So she has 10 focus on her. So I'm just gonna drop these blue ones to represent her focus. And we'll have these green ones over here to represent Karchev's focus. So we'll say that Kador has first turn. So the very first thing that happens before anybody does anything is that there's what's called a control phase. In a control phase, a few things happen, but I'm just going to go over the basic ones. The first thing that you can do is you can allocate your focus. Now, you can give some of the focus from the Warcaster to any Warjacks in his battle group. You can give up to three of them to each of your Warjacks. The Warjacks will be able to use these focus to boost their attacks. In, or, in other words, they can make, use the focus to make it easier to hit, or they can use the focus to do more damage. They can also use the focus to make extra attacks, but there are certain restrictions there. So in this case, I am going to give one focus to my destroyer. Now you do not give focus to units or solos, you can only give focus to war jacks. So the control phase is now over. Now we are going to go through the main phase. In the main phase, you choose individual models or groups of units and you activate them. When you activate a model or a unit, it performs all of its actions before you move on to the next one. So it will move, it'll shoot, it'll attack, whatever it does, it'll do everything. And once you move on to the next one, the previous model cannot do anything more unless there's a special spell or special rule that allows it to do so. So to start, let's do something simple. I'm going to activate my destroyer. Now my destroyer has a movement of four inches. And so I can choose to move him because I want to try to get up into range of shooting. So I'm going to use my template here and mark out four inches. So he's going to move up in a straight line, keep the focus with him. And now he's going to turn and he's going to target the Crusader 
and it's going to try to hit him with his attack. Now his attack is a 3 inch blast template that has a range of 14 inches. So I'm going to need my measuring tape for this one. And we measure base to base. So I am in range, it's less than 12 inches away. And now I have to roll to see if I hit him. Now because it's a blast, if I miss him, the, the blast will actually deviate and might hit somebody else or might miss altogether. If it's an attack without a blast, if I miss, I miss, and no damage is done anywhere. So the way that you see if you hit is you always roll two dice, and you add, in this case, your range attack. You have two skills. You have a melee attack, it's called a mat, M-A-T, and you have a range attack, which is your rat, or R-A-T. And you use the one, obviously, that makes the most sense. In this case, I'm going to use his rat, his range attack, which is only four. So I roll 2d6, I rolled really bad, and a roll of um, a double one is always a miss, but in this case I rolled three. And I'm going to add four, my range attack, which brings up to seven. And what I need to compare this to is the Crusader's defense. Now the Crusader's defense is ten, so I did not get the Crusader's defense. So in other words, this attack would have missed, but since it's an area attack, it is instead going to scatter. So the way that this works is you put the blast template over it, and you can see the direction of target. So I'm pointing that direction away from where I shot from. And then you can see that there's numbers there. So I'm gonna roll a die. I roll a two, so it's gonna deviate in that direction. Then I roll a D3, which is half of a D6. So it's gonna move one inch in that direction, so about this far. So the three inch blast still hits the Crusader, but since the center is not over it, I'm only gonna do half of the power of the attack. Now the power of the Bombard, the weapon that he's firing, is 14. So I'm only going to actually do power of 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll two dice, and I'm going to add it to 7. Now in this case, I'm going to use my focus to boost this attack. And what happens when you boost it is you get to add a third die. So I'm going to roll three dice and add 7. That's a better roll. So I rolled 14 plus 7 is 21. Now the Crusader's armor is what we're going to compare this to. And the Crusader's armor is 19. Now since I beat the armor by 2, I do 2 points of damage to the Crusader. And that's how you basically work it. You roll the hit, you compare your attack against their defense, and then you roll to wound and you compare the power of the weapon against the armor of the target. And however much you beat it by is how much damage you do. Now since he's a Warjack, he actually has a few different locations that I can hit. So I would roll a die, and then I'd use his card and I'd mark the damage on that card. And it's possible to disable systems and all of that, but we're not going to get into that in this video. So his activation, the destroyer's activation, is now complete. He has moved and he has shot. So now we're going to move on to somebody else. Next, I'm going to activate my Man of Wars. There are different kinds of movement that you can do. There's two basic movements. You can just do a full advance, which is moving up to your, your speed. Or you can do a run, or you can do a charge. A charge, obviously, you need to declare a target, and then you move towards that target and you move your movement plus three inches. A run is simply moving twice your movement or twice your speed. Now a unit needs an order in order to do this. You can't just decide to run. A warjack actually needs to use a focus to run or charge. But a unit needs an order from their leader. So everybody needs to be within his command range, which they are obviously. His command is nine, so they have to be within nine inches of him to receive the order. So I'm going to activate them, and he's going to command them to run. So they can move up to eight inches, because normally they can only move four. They're actually quite slow. So they're going to move up here. That is the end of their activation, because if you run, you cannot do anything else. So last but not least, I'm going to activate Karchev, who is going to just walk. Actually, the Karchev has a special rule that he can get an extra focus or move an extra two inches. So I'll just drop an extra focus on him just for fun. And he is going to walk up four inches. He's going to bring his five focus with him. And then he is going to cast a spell called Eruption. And this is an area of effect spell just like the Bombard. In fact, it's pretty much almost identical to the Bombard, except it has a shorter range. It only has a range of eight inches. And it still has a power of 14 and an area of effect of three. Now the difference is that this is going to drop an area of effect cloud that causes things to catch on fire, but we're not going to bother with that. I just want to show you quickly how a spell works. So first off, he, it costs three focus, so I'm going to remove three focus from him. And then he's going to target the Harbinger, but it's an eight inch blast. As you can see, there's not enough range. When you cast a blast, or if you cast any 
uh, or you shoot anything or a range magically, you automatically miss. But because this is a blast, when you miss, you automatically deviate. So I put the blast where it would have reached, and now I'm going to roll to see how far it deviates. So it moves in four, so it's actually going to go backwards, and it's going to go backwards D3. So it goes back one inch, so there's an explosion right here, and nothing happens. Karchev has two more focus, so he could cast another spell, but he's going to stop right there, and he's just going to hold on to those two focus. Any focus that the Warcasters hold on to add to their armor, so he actually has plus two armor during the Minos turn. That completes the Kador turn. There is an end phase where there's certain things that might happen, but in this case we don't have any special rules that affect that, so we will skip that phase. And let's just jump right into the Menos turn.